I'm Doug, and I'm a survivor. I was on an ATV, hit a tree stump in the ground. It blew me up in the air, 80 to 120 feet. Bam, right on my head, no helmet. I'm Amy, Doug's sister. He was convulsing, and he had blood coming out his ears, and he had to get a helicopter flown out of there. They said he died in the air, and they revived him. It was not long after that that the hoarding started. You walk into the house, the first thing you see is trash. Beer cans, soda cans, any cans, couches that are completely destroyed. Some of the things just don't even make sense. My name is Curtis and I am Doug's uncle. I think he just started collecting things. It was his own type of therapy for himself. My house right now looks like a cluttered up junkyard inside closed doors. I'm Frank, Doug's neighbor. The house is like rat droppings everywhere. You know, I mean, these are big boys. These are like water rats. And he'll let them scurry along. I know he's seen them. tried to help him fix up the inside of the house. We tried to help him get the plumbing going in there, and he won't let me work in that house. It's very depressing to see Doug live the way he lives. My main belief reason why I did do that was to bring up my memory for how I was before my accident. The hoarding just really went rampant from that point. It's when he stopped taking care of himself. I feel real guilty. I promised my dad before he died that we wouldn't lose the house and that Doug would be taken care of. But I don't feel like I've done my part. He doesn't want to move. He won't move. He won't stay with me. I don't know what to do. My name's Corey Chalmers. I'm an extreme cleaner specializing in biohazard and hoarding. It's the morning. I spend the night in Doug's house. I'm very tired. It was a long night. A lot of noises in this house during the night. You can just hear things crawling around. Uh, this is just no way to live. The plan is Dr. Chabot's going to come here today, let her meet Doug, let her make her own plan, but then we're going to get this cleanup going and hopefully make a huge change in this guy's life. Hello. Hi, Doug. I'm Dr. Chabot. Hello, I'm Doug. How you doing? I'm Dr. Suzanne Chabot, and I'm a specialist in OCD and hoarding. You ready? I'm ready for it. Okay. You can help me out. All right. <gasps> Don't open up all the way. Let him out. <laughs> When I looked in the fridge, it was just terrible. And I didn't realize exactly how bad it really, really, really was. And has anybody let somebody live like that? Last time I was here, you could walk in here. It's called a hell. My brother, he, um, he, he wanted to make sure that Doug always had a, a home. A few times we remodeled this house before these kids were born. You stuck it out with your brother, trying to help him make things right for his family. I think Curtis and I both feel that we should have stepped up to the plate and done what my father would have wanted us to done a long time ago. I just, everything my brother did here and just going straight to hell. So far, we've filled up about three and a half dump trucks. It's just squalor, a lot of trash. 
It could be good, but it's trash. Perfect. Look at that. Nice. Forget it. Yeah. Wow, who's that? That picture. Uh, that is a picture of me many years ago when I was about 12 or 13. You look so sweet and innocent. Unlike a lot of hoarders, Doug is brain damaged. He needs objects to trigger his memory. Is this important to you? That was back when the next door house just got built. The greatest gift that we can give Doug is getting him to realize that there are other ways to maintain memories. Tarp. Keeper. Got it. Keeper. That's the keeper. Trash. No, I'm keeping it. So Amy and Doug are in the shed right now working on getting it cleared out. The shed holds a lot of significance. There's a lot of emotional baggage in there because this is where they found their father passed away. He passed out in prayer position, leaned over the side of his bed, died right And there. you don't remember any of that? His father was very important to him. He played a big role in his life. And we're trying to draw some of that out of him, see if he really does remember it. I actually remember seeing my dad dead not talking to me. Checked him, no pulse, I knew it, gone. I just know that he's smiling down at us right now. I saw him let him go. So he's always with you? Yep, no matter where I go. Nothing bad. Maybe that's where I'm... Don't go there. This isn't one of those doctor things taking you somewhere. This is me oh. taking you somewhere. Okay. His biggest fear is doctors taking him to a facility. And I think that's kind of what's going through his head. So I'm trying to calm him down and just tell him that's not what's happening. This is something that can be good, but it's your choice if you want to do it. We are here at a hair studio and spa, and they have offered to shave, trim your hair if you want it. Let's make a new Doug. Doug is completely nervous right now. Got this guy yanking on his face, you know, pulling him around. You can see his hands just twitching. Relax, take it easy. You're not real comfortable, huh? He's a little apprehensive. Yeah. He is not used to this at all. All right, this is extremely long, so work with me here. This is your decision. Our goal is this, we're gonna make a new bedroom for him, we're gonna make a memory and art room for him, and we're gonna get the kitchen and bathroom clean and functional again. Just really brighten it up. It was so dull and dirty in there. Hopefully by making over these rooms, it'll make him feel like he deserves to be someone again. This is an opportunity for Doug, getting beyond the hoarding and really learning that he's a person who's worth being with other people. Look at you all cleaned up. God, look at his hair. Doug just came out of the bathroom. He has his hair cut. He's clean shaven. He has all these new clothes on. He looks like a completely different person, and it's pretty awesome. Having a makeover is not essential, but it sure does give people a way of feeling like life can be good again. Oh, wow. You look great. <laughs> awesome. Oh, wow. Look how handsome you are, Doug. Thank you. Awesome. Wonderful. Awesome. It's all man. Good. We've seen the new ham. You guys ready to see the new ham? Yeah, let's new do life? it. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, Amy. <Amy. laughs> Goodness. Oh, my God. Wow. You got some space. Wow. How wonderful is this? The family is overjoyed. This is more than they ever expected. Check it out. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. Yes, it you is can a see this is perfect. Match it up together. Wow. This is a home where he can function, where Doug can have a normal life. I'm Proud. already ahead of you, Doug. You've got to see this. Oh, yeah. Wow, <laughs> this is a memory room. This is your memory room. Things that you don't recall, things that were really stolen from you from your accident. You have a place to come and recollect. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. You and mom, you and dad, you deserve every bit of this. It's organized, it's civilized, like a normal house should be. 
Over the past few days, we've removed five trucks that equaled about 10,000 pounds of literally trash out of his house. Pretty amazing that he let go of all that. Once we're gone, this family has a lot of work to do. You know, this isn't just on Doug. This is on the family to come together. So hopefully they've gotten the message and this will be a new life for all of them. How do you feel about your house now? I feel great. That's what I want to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being a fan of Hoarders and subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.